Climate change has been blamed for turbulence on a plane linked to gun violence, accused of being inherently racist and sexist, and now climate change is being blamed for domestic abuse. According to an op-ed in the Washington Post, if a man in a poor country brutalizes a woman, his victim could attribute her aggressor's cruelty, at least in part, to climate change. The op-ed is titled, Climate Change Puts More Women at Risk for Domestic Violence. And according to one excerpt, heat waves, flood, climate-induced disasters, increased sexual harassment, mental and physical abuse, femicide, reduce economic and educational opportunity, and increase the risk of trafficking due to forced migration. You know, Harris, why take the fo focus off of the domestic abuse and the domestic abuser by trying to reduce this to climate change? Because they can't deal with that, because they don't have copious answers to deal with that. You know, what we saw in the lockdowns was an increase in domestic abuse because mm. people were home with, with their abusers more. Mm -hmm. We saw that with, with children as victims as well. You know, teachers need to do more than just a check-in. Well, what are we hearing from Randy Weingarten today? Right? She leads the nation's biggest union. She's like, well, maybe the lockdowns weren't a good idea. I'm sure <laughs> they're see seeing some of the same statistics on the relationships that it takes to check on a child in an abusive home. And teachers know. My mom was a teacher for many years before she was a social worker. And what they will tell you is, you know the kids in class that you need to kind of check mm -hmm. up on every now mm -hmm. and then. You need to eyeball them. Mm -hmm. So this is, to me, a function of, well, we don't really know what to do. Let's make it about race. And my goodness, how many things can you make about race? Or about climate change, you know, Martha? I mean, everything, you know, turbulence on a plane, gun violence, everything is being attributed to climate change. And then now this, domestic abuse. What's the motive behind that? You know, wh why is there this effort by the left, by the media, to draw, a, a, you know, a linear connection to climate change on essentially every issue? You know, it's interesting, and it makes me think about the fact that climate change is the number one issue on the discussions today between Canada, the United States, and South America. And we've heard it even from, you know, former leaders at the Pentagon, that climate change is the biggest threat to national security. It's a convenient way to sort of put a label on every... So I, I mean, you could say that pretty much about anything that goes wrong, right? If you have an increase in, uh, you know, a certain kind of, uh, of illness, you could say, well, you know what, it probably goes back to climate change because that's what they want to continually bring people's focus back to. And it mm. is unfortunate for people who are being abused because, as you pointed out in the beginning, um, it siphons off what their issue is, what they're suffering from. And in any society, when you have people who are suffering economically, suffering through, you know, war, you're going to have an increase in abuse because you have tensions that are rising and you have all of these issues. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it feels a bit disingenuous, to say the least. Well, you know, and, and too, there was this quick caveat in it, uh, Doug, where basically they're like, oh, we can't really draw a, a clear connection to this, but this is what we think. And it's sort of hidden in this op-ed. So, I, I mean, if, if they can't, here it is. This is the, the quote from Washington Post. So this little nugget was in it. Several academics, activists, and human, humanitarian workers said the links between violence against women and extreme weather events needs more research. Yet this entire op-ed is saying the opposite. So, so what about that? Look, I can, I can tell you that people love baseball more when it's hot weather. Why? Because when they play baseball and it's in the summer. Statistics can tell you anything. Right. Here's the real issue, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about this. But climate change is not something one of us can solve. Right. The reason you <clears throat> use it to describe everything else is government can solve climate change. Mm -hmm. So if I blame everything oh, on government, right. then government is my solution. And again, I bring it from a perspective. Of if government is my perspective, is government is the answer, then government is going to be the cause or the to fix what I can't fix. I believe that's a lot of this behind this. But this does a very, for someone who's worked with uh, rape crisis centers, who's been, yeah. this is sad. Do not right. put domestic violence here. Yeah. And, and I mean, yeah. Emily, close us out on the legal angle of this, looking through a legal prism and all this. Right. Well, the travesty to me is that the Washington Post publishes this op-ed, this nonsense, and takes that space away from actual arguments, from actual facts. The reason that there it's domestic violence is because of ineffective laws and ineffective enforcement. Mm -hmm. Over half of women that are murdered, more brutally, by the way, than any other type of homicide, is by their intimate partners or a man they know. And over a third of those men were already known to law enforcement. We know firsthand how difficult it is to get a restraining order. Oh, sorry, stalking's not enough. Oh, sorry, stalking needs a mental element. Yeah. Right. 
11 days after, after Sierra Jackson from D.C. got a restraining order that she had been trying to do, she was shot dead in her apartment mm -hmm. through the window. And you know what was lying on the microwave just a few feet from where her dead body lay in the kitchen? A copy of the restraining order. Mm -hmm. How good did that do her? So the fact that WAPO publishes right. that it's all about climate change, you know, if you want to be an advocate for change, if this person actually wants to help those women and those men and those children that are the victims of domestic violence, you want to know how to change, then why don't you learn what your local and state laws are you start there and you affect change in that way because the next time that a judge says I'm sorry my hands are tied the next time we talk about a homicide on this right. couch and we know that that perp had multiple priors for violent arrests we're gonna say you know what that was predictable yeah. climate change get out of here that was a travesty <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.